so our uh, next step is to understand what are the different types of selectors we have right so as i told you there are uh, multiple selection types available uh, so we need to uh, use like understand uh, what are those and uh, what are the benefits by using those selectors selection types right so in the straightforward we can understand like there are a situation we need to uh, pick multiple tags right so that is a one and the other option is we so the other requirement is we may need to pick only a single element right selection i am talking about in the selection side right so for example the one that we have already observed with the previous example this is a tag selector that is what it is basically selecting multiples no so for example if i have another paragraph right? if i have another paragraph so if i copy this and put it down so what will happen since we already inform for the css that select the tag by its name right in that situation the css will select all the uh, relevant p tags no so there are two p tags so both p tags will have the same style whereas your objective is to only apply this color for the first paragraph not for the second paragraph it has a different color or any other different style so now you can simply understand this selection will not satisfy my requirement because i need to apply onto a single p tag but apparently it will pick the all p tags and provide the style so that mean there should be other selection types which will help us to uh, do different selection uh, based on the requirement so mainly two types one is multiple selection and the other one is single selection right so you need to you may need to have multiple selection and the single selection and the hybrid mode in between that multiple selection means all selections single selection means only one selection so the middle is custom selections right so that means it may go for uh, we will say you have 10 but you may select only 5 or else you may go for a one selection or you may go for all selection so those are the three approaches we have picking everything picking only one or a custom selection custom number of selection those are the three selection option or the categories that we can observe so the h2 or the tag selector is somewhat like a selecting all all the h2 references all the paragraph references in this page will be get this style so that is all scenario right <laughs> so with that we'll see uh, what are these other uh, the different selection options provided by the uh, css language So the first one is the universal selector, or the universal in the sense everything. No, it's not specific for a one tag. It's applied for everything, right? So, for example, in in this uh, code base, right, we say that uh, I need to have a one font style. for all these text right so currently i i would see that it's having kind of a uh, time new roman style right so if you just inspect the code right then if i 
say go on to the heading. Let me see if there are any default style they show us. Right, so you can see rendered font. That is Time New Roman. Clear? So that is what basically say. OK, so it's a, a Time New Roman uh, font style. So I want to modify this, right? So all these text follow this default font that is Time New Roman. So what I do is I will use the universal selector. So the universal selector basically uh, use asterisk. This is what we call a universal selector, right? And then I can provide the a style I want. So I, I was looking for change the font family. So what I do is I'll use the command call font dash family, right? So when we are giving uh, our own font style, right? We need to be very, very careful. The reason is, uh, since we are giving uh, our own font style, there may be a situation where browser can't understand the font style we provide. It can be happen. So all the browsers are not compatible with all the font style. So therefore, we should provide a second option, right? So if the font first font family that we asked to apply, if it is not known by the browser, then what we can do is we can provide a second option. OK, so if this is not, shall, you can check the second one. If the second one is again not available to browser to read, then go for the third one. So likewise, we can give some more options with the font family. And finally, if the browser is unable to pick any of that style, then it will go again back to the default font style that is the Time New Roman, right? So we'll say in my case, I'll give this option, Arial, Helvetia, and the Sans Serif. So three options I am providing, right? In this order, the most relevant style that I want to apply is given in the first place. That is the Arial. If the browser unable to read the Arial, then it will jumps to the Helvetia. If that is not enabled, then it goes to the Sans Serif, right? So even if that's not work, then it goes to the browser default style. So with that, I'll save the file and refresh the page. Now I can see that almost all the tags in my page now turn into that specific font style. So if I go and check in the heading, right, I can see my style is applied here. Even if I go to the H2, I can see that style was applied. Now if I go to the paragraph, I can see my style is applied. Right. So therefore, if you feel that a style which need to be applied throughout the page, uh, irrespective with the HTML tag, you can use the uh, asterisk symbol. Right. So for the universal selector, you can put the asterisk or you can ignore it. You can keep it blank. Even that's also fine, right? Make him blank again will indicate for the uh, what happens. Okay. So basically, if you don't apply again, it will. Okay. 
so previously it was applied like this even if you make it uh, empty that automatically consider as the asterisk now it's mandatory right so that's something i forgot so you need to put the asterisk it's mandatory or else that's another option right so not keep in the blank but you can use the body right so if i use the body which is more similar to the universal selector because the body is the parent of all these tags. So if I ask to say it's for the body, you should follow this font style automatically. The child's of this body tag will enable the font family, right? So if I refresh the page, you can see now again it got applied to all the tags, right? So two options I can propose. One is you can pick the body tag it's a tag selector at the end or else you can go with the asterisk which is the most accepted way to pick the uh, all uh, tags in the page so the next one that we already seen before that is the type selector right so for the type selector what it requires is the, the specific tag style right so where it has to be follow the tag rule where you have the left angle bracket, right angle bracket and a middle text. So that is the requirement. No? So if I pick this here, so this is a valid. So this one, this is a valid HTML tag where you have the left angle bracket, right angle bracket and the text. But what happens if I keep something like this? A tag which is having we'll say ABC and then put a space and then put a XYZ and do like this. So this is basically we know can't be a, a valid tag. No, so this may be considered as a separate attribute then, right? So therefore we need to make sure that it has to be a valid tag, right? So valid in the sense the structure of the tag that is what it follows. So for example, now if I just put the ABC and then uh, we'll say we'll just put some lorem ipsum content, right? And in my external file, what I do is since I know this is a valid form of HTML tag, I can simply refer to that even though this is not a valid HTML uh, own tag, the syntax wise, this is correct. Right, because it has a left angle bracket, right angle bracket, and a middle a text. Right, so I can style it. Right, so for this, we'll say I want to give the background color, which is a different color, not a purple one. Right, so we'll give this chocolate color. Right, so now if I refresh, I can see it's there. I can see I, I got the background colors. Right? So that means this uh, requirement is very clear. It needs to follow the rule where it describe a proper HTML tag. Clear? So that is the requirement. No, so you can have any tag, but it needs to be a valid structure. We are left angle bracket, right angle bracket, middle should have a text. say this is a tag selection right so the tag selection what it does it will select all the occurrences So it will select all the occurrences of that selected tag, right? So if this is the selected tag is ABC, so then all the occurrences in this page, if I put it 10 times, all the 10 uh, ABC tags will get the background color of this, right? So that is the requirement. And also you understood that it has to be a valid tag form, right? So if that's so, then the CSS can simply 
select that HTML tag and do the uh, styling. Right. Basically, uh, again, command is selecting all options, right? So this is selecting everything. This is selecting all the occurrences of the respective selection selecting tag, right? Again, it's somewhat like a all scenario. You pick everything in there, right? So this uh, next option is a custom selection, right? Where you can make it everything to select or else to single selection or else a custom selection custom number of selections can be placed so this is the what we call the uh, class selector so the class selector is uh, something that we use very heavily in the uh, css because it has so much of flexibility compared to the tag selectors uh, and the right now you know the universal selector and the tag selector so there's another one called id selector so compare with those three the class selector has more flexibility than the others so because of that most of the time we try our selection using the class selector right so the class selector as i told you it's kind of a custom number of selection that we can apply right so there are a few things that we need to satisfy right so for example in this case you can see like there are tags and you can see there's an attribute called class right so this class attribute is the one which we are telling in the html code that this is a kind of a reference name for that specific tag right so you can see in this case there's a div tag and a p tag so both it has the class attribute and we have provided the same class name so that means this is kind of a reference only for these two tags even the tags are different here with this it basically pick both of this right so for example now if i uh, will say move on to another tag right so we'll say I have a, a list, right? So we'll say I'll create a ordered list. And then in there, I'll just put the HTML, which we already did in the other lessons, CSS. And the JavaScript, right? So now we have this three list items, no? if i try to modify this list item we'll say i want to have a font color right and then if i just use the tag selector what will happen all the three li's will get the same color but this time it's not the thing that i want right i don't want all the li tags to be have the same color i need only the first and the last two tags has the same font color but the middle ones i don't need that same color right so this is the place where now you can see we do the custom number of selection we have three occurrences out of that only two uh li's would have the font color right so we know that the ones that we learned so far from that we can't achieve that right so therefore we can look at this class scenario right so in this class scenario we first use the class attribute and we'll say this is uh, highlight the name highlight dash color so highlight text that is the name i provide for the class and the same thing i'm going to apply on here right so before adding it we'll just see whether it's work for the first one so when you are referring to the class selector you need to understand that here we do did a modification by adding a name to the attribute called class and from the css we are going to access that name so when you are accessing 
we have to inform to the CSS code that this name, what we are going to provide for the CSS, it is a reference name for a class attribute because we know there are so many other attributes in the HTML, right? So there may be a attribute called name, which is equal to the same text, which I say highlight dash text. Both cases having the same name, but the attribute wise, the attribute name is different. So therefore we need to inform to the CSS that don't look at anywhere, look at only the CSS attribute, right? If a CSS attribute which is having this name, select that element, right? So how we say that we are looking for the CSS uh, so, the, so looking for the class attribute that is done by the dot or the period symbol. We need to put the period symbol at the beginning and then type the name of this. Highlight text and then now I can provide the color. We'll say the color of the text. I need it. dark green. I check with the result. Okay, so I can see not much clear. So we'll go with a different color. Dark orange. Right, so now I can see this, the first one got the dark orange. So that means I can pick the single selection, single element and do this. Or else I can apply this same class name to the last one. So then it's a multiple selection, but it's not all the occurrences selection. It's only two that we are uh, going to select. Now you can see the first one and the last one of the list got selected. So that's why I told you this is somewhat like a very special selection where you can have a multiple selections or single selection can be done parallelly in this uh, selection type. Already see that the class has a, a more flexibility of selecting multiples or singles or custom numbers, right? And that's uh, another one, right? you can apply another selection class selection to the same class right so for example we say now this is basically uh, we did for the uh, highlight the text right so highlighting in the sense like it basically giving a background color normally that's what it happens right so if I give this like uh, changing into the background color, right? Like this. Oh, I should be able to get this uh, output which was selecting it's in a, a background color like this, right? And now I want to uh, add another style which will be basically giving a, uh, we'll say, uh, Tell is uh, change in the font size, right? So the font size I need to be apply only for the first one. That's the first one that I need, not for the second one, not for the third one. So if I just go here and then apply the property, which is font style, font uh, size, right? And then I'll make it like uh, we'll say 24 pixel. Right. What will happen? What would be the output? Will it only apply one or will it apply for both? It goes for the both. So that is not what what I'm re, uh, looking for. Right. I don't need both to be changed the size. So what I, what I have to do now is I need to think about a different selection. No, sorry, a different class. Right. So what I do is 
I will create another class. We'll say um, we'll say this is uh, primary font something, and then for that I will place the font size. Okay, so now the primary class or primary dash font class is not applied yet for the HTML page. So what I can do is now I can simply take this copy and go back to the class where I have the highlight text. Keep a space right now I can add the second class. Like this. Right, so now we have the highlight dash text which will be provided in the background color and this will be basically turning the font size to the primary font style. So now if I refresh, what happens? Now you can see that the first text in our list will got the both styles because we provide the both of them, right? Highlight in the text and the font size. And this one has the highlight text, but it doesn't have any font size change. So this one will say I need to have the primary font which will be not having the background color but the font size is now set to 24. So now can you see that it's more flexible where you can add multiple classes. Right, so if you have another class then you can add it like this, keep a space and then apply. So there's no any order. You can either keep this on the beginning and put it on to the second. So likewise, you can uh, give different orders. It doesn't uh, do any change. That is the uh, benefit of that. So the first uh, benefit if I list down is where you can have a, a custom Selection second one you can add multiple single element. Okay, so therefore, like most of the time, we uh, try to use the class selector than using any other selection because we have this multiple class adding for a single element and the custom selections. So those are some more benefits that you can get from the uh, class select, right? So then uh, the other important one that is uh, selecting a single one, right? You are not supposed to use you uh, to use this ID selector to select the multiples. It has to be always go with the single selection, right? So in that case, uh, this is somewhat like you can use. Um, so this ID selector is somewhat used by other languages as well, especially in the JavaScript. So it also utilizing this ID uh, attribute, right? To do the uh, HTML selection. So here also you can see that we use attribute call ID, right? So in the class selector, we use the class attribute, right? So that is what we use there. No? So in the ID selector, we use the ID attribute. So the ID attribute, uh, we provide a name and referred with the hash symbol. So remember that in the CL, uh, class selector, we put the dot and when it's come to ID selector, we use the hash, right? So we'll say that uh, we have another list item there, right? Which here I will use the ID and then provide this is um, related to backend. So in my code base, I'll referred with the hash and then 
put the name that I provide for the attribute and then I will give a style. So we'll say that for this I want to um, uh, let's say put an underline, right? So I will uh, make it text decoration underline. Right. So now this is the property that you can use to underline right without using the HTML element U tag without using that you can use the CSS property text decoration underline right. So with that you can see. Right, so you can see now this last one which has the underline. So we can use this like uh, ID selector to pick single. single element, right? So we normally don't like use in the multiple places. So in this page, this is the only place where we have that backend with that ID, right? So that is uh, what you can observe. So we are not going to make it multiple references. Like uh, this is the original size, right? This is what we change, right? We provide, like, if you look at here, we provide for the li, right? So the li is the one which was generating this number and the text. So we basically providing the style for the li tag. So when you are adding this change, or the font size change of it, it apply for the number and the text. So if you are looking for only the text to be changed, not the number, then you should not apply it for here, right? So you need to place another paragraph or else a label wrapping this text and for that label you need to apply. Is that clear? So for example, in here, in this HTML, right? So if I just put a label, right? HTML, and then here if I use the class, change the font size, right? So I will Now you can see only that label got the style now, right? So this number one will be remain as the same size. 